All right, today, uh, and this section is, we're going to take a gander at our friend Pythagorean Theorem. <sighs> this is everything, the most beautiful, oh, gorgeous. And tomorrow we're gonna look at what's called the converse. So we're gonna flip it and see what we can learn about the types of triangles that we're dealing with. So that'll be tomorrow. Today we're gonna do Pythagorean Theorem and we're actually gonna prove that puppy. All right, so let's take a gander over here and uh, what is the Pythagorean Theorem? First off, it only applies to what type of triangle? Right triangle. right triangle. So please draw a right there. Over here, this is a leg. This is a leg. And this is your friend, the hypotenuse. All right, the official saying is something like this. And I'll also attach uh, letters there. So A, B generally are my uh, legs. And C generally is what we call the hypotenuse. The letters are not the important part, it's the location, it's where they are. They can officially be switched around. But the Pythagorean theorem officially is stated as thus. So as we apply it here, notice if I were to label it, this could be my A, this could be my C, and this could be my C here. However, over here, that's my C. So we have to pay very close attention. So I'm going to set this puppy up. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to my unknown x squared. Now, I know this is true because I have a right triangle, so I'm using the rule here. And now we just begin to work our magic. 36 plus 64 equals x squared. x squared equals 100. And now, notice that although in real mathematical life, when I do take the square root, technically... There is a plus and a minus, but why do I not deal with the negative? Because the distance can't be negative. Distance can't be negative. So I'm going to, it's called an extraneous number. It's called an extraneous. So I'm just going to write it out and say positive 10. And there we go. So now when we set this other one up, X is a leg, five is a leg, and 13 is the hypotenuse. So notice the variable isn't always the one that's by itself. Now we simplify things, 25 equals 169, and so x squared equals $1.44, and then when we square root both sides, we get 12. So far, we've been dealing with only whole numbers. So when we set this one up, we're looking for the hypotenuse, we see it's 2 radical 29, and if you were to estimate it, because maybe you're asked for distance, uh, the distance from, you know, your home to uh, school or something. Uh, in the end, your answer would be approximately 10 point. Did anybody do that? Seven-ish, Seven okay? Folks, this is the bestest way to write the answer. Bestest way. The most bestest way would be that one. Okay, now one observation up here, one observation, is there is something called a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple are triple, that's three numbers, it's three numbers. What type of numbers? They have to be integers. More specifically, even whole numbers. Whole numbers that satisfy Pythagorean theorem. That satisfy Pythagorean theorem. All right. So if I were to look at D, E, and F, do I have a set of three numbers? that are all whole, that fit into Pythagorean theorem? And the answer is yes. Here's a 6, an 8, and when we found C, we saw 10. So we see that 6, 8, and 10 is a Pythagorean, together is a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple. Turns out any multiple of that is also a Pythagorean triple. If you double all those, if I double this 12, Eight, uh, 16 and 20, that would be a Pythagorean triple as well. Notice here, 3, sorry, 5, 12, and 13 is a Pythagorean triple. 13. Good. Again, double those too, triple those, etc. all of that. Notice this one is not a Pythagorean triple because although the legs are whole numbers, this ends up being a decimal if you estimate it. Turn the page to see the beauty here. This is the most elegant proof of the Pythagorean theorem I've ever seen. And there are many, many, many of them. In fact, President Garfield, president of our very own United States, 
He used a variation of this one, but a trapezoid instead. So what is the proof for the Pythagorean theorem? Notice what happened here is each one of these, you see that there are four right triangles. Essentially, all we've done is this. We take one right triangle, we copy, paste, paste, and paste with some rotation. So now look at all the shapes that are. One, two, three, four right triangles. I see a small square kind of tilted there, and I see the big mama square all the way around. So if we're talking about area, if we're talking about the area of everything, I can describe it as the area of the big thing or the sum of the five smaller parts. So that's essentially what we're doing here. So notice, if this one is B, this one is A, if this one is A, this one is B, etc. So I know if I wanted to talk about the um, area of the big square is equal to the sum of the parts, right? So that's essentially what we're going to do. We're just going to set them equal to each other and see what we end up getting, okay? So the area of the big square is equal to the sum of all the five individual components. So let's see, what's the big square? Well, it's base times height, which if this is my base, A plus B. So the area of this one is A plus B times A plus B, or A plus B. So in other words, it's A plus B squared. A plus B times itself. That has to do with quadratics, which I know some of us haven't done yet. So uh, I will walk gently through that. Now notice over here, the sum of the parts, I have four triangles, right? So I have four triangles, and each triangle is one-half base times height, one-half A times B. Let me just clarify that. One-half the A times the B. And there are four of them, one, two, three, and four. Now I need this square. So the last component here is the area of the tilted square, which is C times C. Now you'll have to trust me on this, many of you, but uh, when I take a plus b times a plus b, you end up getting this, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If you had done FOIL, you would have ended up with that. All right, now over here, half of 4 is 2, so I get 2ab plus the c squared. What do you notice is the same on both sides? 2ab minus 2ab, and what do we end up getting? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. <sighs> so what we want to do is walk through an application of this and uh, see where uh, Pythagorean theorem is used. So take a gander here. Metal expands and contrast, contracts with changes in temperature. So as it gets hotter, metal expands. And as it gets colder, metal will shrink down. Your hands kind of do the same thing in terms of feeling rings on them. All right, so the transatlantic pipeline was built to accommodate expansion and contraction. In other words, they put little rubber gaskets every, I don't know, 100 feet or something. And they, so it's kind of this spoingy little gasket. All right, um, if it hadn't been built that way, uh, consider a 600-foot section of pipe. So that's not drawn to scale. I got to clean that up. Beep, 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 beep. All right, that's not right still. Maybe that is. All right, so now we have this pipe, but what happens if it expands two inches? All it does is expand two inches. So if we know what happens, let's say it expands and expands, it's got to break somewhere, right? It breaks somewhere. So if it does break just two inches, that now means my new pipe is up a little bit, like this. So let me just... So let me just throw some numbers down here. If I assume that it breaks right in the middle, it's 300 feet that way, 300 feet that way, which now means this one is 300 feet and one inch, and that's a double, and this one's 300 feet and one inch, okay? So our question is, we're trying to figure out how high does it buckle? So we want to know the height of the buckling. If we only expand by two inches, essentially one inch on that side and one inch on that side. So Pythagorean theorem says this, I need to know my h, I'm looking for the h squared, plus my 300 squared, is going to equal to 300 point, what is, 
look how very, very little it's, it's increasing. And I'll put the square on top of that. So when we square it, we get roughly 90,050 with a little bit of change. And over here, we get 90,000 because 300 squared. Now, H squared, I'm going to subtract 90,000 from both sides, is approximately 50-ish. Uh, now I take the square root. So on your calculator, after you subtract 90,000, square root it. H is approximately 7.07 what? Cats, dogs, inches? Feet. In other words, in other words, a two-inch expansion of the pipe. And this is, folks, only a third of a mile, folks, if that. No, 600 feet. So that's uh, one-eighth, one-ninth of a mile. Uh, this is only one-eighth, one-ninth of a mile. This is going across Alaska. So if it didn't have these, look at, it buckled seven feet. That's taller than I am. Boom, it shoots up. 